You got it tomorrow? Yep. All right, let's get Jake back here. Jake's up. I just want to make sure you're ready. It works. All right, Jake, you're up. Hello, Ann Arbor New Town. Hello, Ann Arbor New Town. That's all I can get. Welcome to the 241st annual Ann Arbor New Town. Five entrepreneurs chalk talk. Five minutes Q and A. Five minutes, and in this audience we have five of our organizers. Let's introduce them now. Wes Hofstadter, Roger Rail, and. Doug Song, uh, you're watching this from the video. Hi, Doug. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Yeah, he's uh, shaking hands and kissing babies in California. Or sh kissing hands and shaking babies. I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's not around. But he has invited five awesome presenters <coughs> next month. However, this month, it's social is our theme. Either that or, or it's, a, it's a, just a giant coincidence, it's something in the water, um, that our uh, presenters all seem to have a uh, common meme going through them. Uh, before we uh, start with Planet With Me, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, David Walensky. Uh, he's my homeboy from Port Huron, and uh, Jake Schwartz, who's actually my travel homeboy from uh, Jackson. Um, they are on their way to meet. Doug Song and all the people he's meeting over on the West Coast, they're part of the U of M Bay Area trip, who have alumni from the Bay Area trip. Identify yourselves. Okay, do I have people who did not wear deodorant today? Don't raise your hands. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, you want this, you want to use that? Uh, we need a microphone? Yeah, Roger wants you to use the microphone. Okay, um, we'll use this then. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm going to start the timer in a moment. Let's give it up for Jake and David. Plan it with me. So through our website, this is where the, 
the customer actually makes his decision on where to go for the evening. For example, a bar, restaurant, sports game. Um, and so we can leverage this. It's very valuable uh, so to us as well as local businesses. So we'll go to the local, local business and you know, develop a partnership and they'll pay for a, you know, a, a top rated um, search result on the site. So for example, we'll search for bars here. You get the, uh, the, the results um, and a sponsored listing. Um, so it's very simple. Um, and you know, we're also considering um, you know, a freemium business model by which uh, users pay for additional, you know, let's say uh, email notifications or uh, geolocation, stuff like that. Um, so how are other websites doing it now? So we've got, uh, we've got doingtonight.com, which is they're in uh, private beta right now. And unfortunately, they only plan uh, a single night. It's not, it's a very specific niche of, of planning events. Um, you know, whereas we'll uh, plan vacations or company retreats. You know, this is a um, single night on the town, I guess. There's plan pass, which is again, just for a single event. Likewise for Evite. Um, and, uh, so we'll, that's that's planetwith.me. Um, we'll be going like uh, like David said. We'll be going to the Bay Area to present this. We're uh, looking forward to what's coming up next. Thank you. Questions? I got the first question. Go ahead. Um, what kind of a sales force do you need to reach scale? Absolutely. Can you can you reach scale? before you go and put feet on the street. Yeah, well, unlike you know Facebook or something with the network effect, you know, our value doesn't come from the fact that we have tons of users. So you can go to this site, use it right away, and, and it'll be helpful to you and your friends. Um, and we think with the nature of the site, um, you know, with all the sharing opportunities and the fact that it's social from the start, um, we think that it's, it's going to be pretty scalable. Other questions? I guess you would need quite a sales force, I guess. I think that's the question you were asking, to develop those local partnerships the way that Groupon has done. And they have tons of people that that's are right. out there selling constantly. And that's, right. that's the kind of thing that right. I think you were asking about, right? How many people you expect yeah. to need so, in that role? Yeah, thank you. Um, good question. So, we, uh, so the partnerships we develop will be valuable for businesses. So we'll have you know, some aspect of the site uh, through which the business um, you know, communicates with us and develops that partnership. So we won't actually actively be seeking out those partnerships. Um, the idea is they will seek us, um, just because of the fact that we'll, uh, we're the decision point, like I said, um, we'll drive the customers to their location. Over here. I have a question. Do you plan to launch uh, locally or in a region or nationally? Nationally. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll, you know, unveil the technology and, Hopefully, it'll, uh, businesses will use it. Um, up front? Okay. Uh, my question was, if, if the businesses are coming to you, I mean, how are they going to find out that you guys even exist to begin with? Like, how are they going to know that you guys are doing this and that they should, like, contact you to register? Absolutely. Sure. So, right. So, we're looking into, uh, you know, marketing uh, systems. You know, we want to um, reach out initially, probably, um, you know, we're planning that. <laughs> the idea would be initially we may have to reach out to certain areas to get a start, but uh, down the line <coughs> we're not looking to have people selling in every city. We're looking for businesses to come to us saying, hey, we know uh, users are using your site. Uh, we know that they're going to see our name on your site, so we want to partner with you. Up here and then down. My, uh, my question was similar on how are you going to get market traction and make the site known into the, uh, the public arena. Sure. Yeah, so you saw the, uh, you know, we had the social network features up there. Um, so that's kind of the idea. Uh, I don't want to use the word viral. I think it's overused these days. But, um, you know, if you're planning an event, you use it. Your five friends use this service to see, you know, the itinerary for the event or events. Um, we think that, you know, just due to the nature of the service, it should spread. That's our hope, at least. Yeah. What's your ask? 
here? Like, what do you want from us? We're just getting the word out. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're working on our pitch. Like I said, we're going to be heading out west to, to deliver the same. Um, All right, somebody tell me what was the best part of this pitch? Right. <laughs> Need to be a little edgier. Pick it up. This is long. Right here. Yeah, just one other question. Um, what's your plan for initially populating the site with information about uh, you know, sure. thousands of businesses out there? Yep, yep. Yeah, David, do you want to talk about sure. the so, uh, Various services like Yelp and Google Places have web APIs that we can use to aggregate information from any uh, review service or review site and have a bunch of information from the start, so we're not starting from scratch. No AUP troubles? No, no, so no, they're, they're made to be used. So, uh, <clears throat> maybe you didn't answer, but how do these uh, places that people visit know that a group came in and used your service? Sure, um, well, we'll be, uh, I presume, you know, pay for delivery, so, uh, you know, there's the whole pay for impressions thing for ads. We'll be, um, you know, so that's something that we'll have to explore. So perhaps we'll think of like some sort of QR code system or something so the user actually verifies or maybe with geolocation verifies the fact that he's here, he came from our site. Um, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Thank you. And we just kind of Perfect. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty people came, 54 of them had new business ideas, 10 of them started teams. One of them won U of M Startup Weekend. And then there's food service, <laughs> which came in second, but only because the first place team was written for my two teenage daughters. I mean, that's like a whole market setting unto itself. Uh, so uh, Hannah is joined here by the fellow with the idea, that's Jonathan Coomer, and let's see how I do this. Vinayak Manchenda. It was not. <laughs> All right, that's close. Uh, they're going to tell us about social food deals. They came from U of M Startup Weekend. Let's give them a warm A2 New Tech welcome. Food service. Cool. Um, like you said, my name is Jonathan Kumar. I'm with Hannah Vinayak and Yurik. I'm here to talk to you about social empowerment. So real quick show of hands, how many of you guys eat out once per week? Okay, now how many of you affected the price just by choosing to go out to eat? Right. So it seems to me that since we're the commodities for the restaurants, we're the scarce resource, restaurants should, restaurants should be more vested, more interested in the purchase decisions we make, their place instead of their competitor down State Street. But on a night like tonight, where in Buffalo Wild Wings, those tables are sitting empty, and I walk up with a $10 bill, and I ask them to provide me an incentive to eat there instead of Chipotle next door, they're going to laugh in my face, honestly. But when I bring my nine friends with me, and they all have the $10 bills in their hands, you know, that's a harder opportunity for the restaurant manager to pass up. That's what our business is predicated on, matching groups of friends already looking out to eat to the restaurants that want them the most. Um, so who are these restaurants? Well, it's simple. Uh, just like a night like tonight, any restaurant with empty tables. Uh, not having business sucks. And if you go outside, half of Ann Arbor restaurants don't have it right now. What are they doing to combat the solution? They're doing Groupons or coupons or Sunday advertisements. Uh, promotions that are based indirectly and individually. What we do is we let them target, communicate, and acquire directly large chunks of traffic that are looking to spend money at that very moment. Who are some of these people? Well, it's a diverse crowd. You guys raise your hands. Uh, people like you, people like me. We have Jen. She's a college BBA here at Michigan. She's a junior going through that recruiting process. She's pretty busy. She doesn't have time to clip coupons or print coupons. She doesn't know what she's doing for dinner when she's eating lunch. But she knows she needs to get dinner for her and her six friends because they have a marketing presentation to prepare for. So she uses our mobile application. Uh, to purchase or to signal her purchase intent to Ann Arbor that she's looking with her six friends to spend money on new ways. Restaurants have an interface that will allow them to see Jen and her friends and directly communicate an incentive for Jen and her friends to spend their 50 to to $100 at their spot instead of anywhere else. So 
does this actually work? Is this of value to restaurants? Well, that's what we tried over the last couple months. We did a you know, small prototype. We got about 15 restaurants in Ann Arbor to sign up for our service and use it. We collected beta participants, and then the weekend of January 22nd, we turned over $350 in revenue. That, that's not revenue for us. That's revenue for them, but you know we're working on it. So that's, uh, that, that's a little market traction. Uh, that's a little concept validation right there. So how does it work? Well, we believe it's, uh, next slide. Uh, it's kind of a triple win. It's a win for the diners because they're getting better value for something they were already doing. It's a win for the restaurants because they have a chance to get more long-term customers. Not only are they optimizing their business during off hours, off days, they're optimizing their business for the long term. And it's a win for us because we're providing that platform to connect these groups to restaurants that need them. So, um, you're on. <laughs> so how do we really make money out of this solution that we have here? Well, so there, there are two key participants here. One are the diners and the other are the restaurants. The diners obviously are getting the ability to go out and leverage their intent to eat out by, and, and generate a discount. The restaurants, on the other hand, are giving a small discount, not the amount of discount they used to give with Groupon where they're obviously losing money, but they're still turning over new acquisition, making direct acquisitions that are gonna last for the longer term. So who is our real target base? Well, we're actually targeting more young professionals here, and looking at their average spending, we're looking at around a $60 billion market in the US, and this is just for the metropolitan cities. If we're only able to capture a very small percentage of that, we feel that would be profitable very, very less than you know, a couple of months here. So how are we really making money? Well, the diners are getting 15% approximately on the discounts. Uh, the restaurants are actually getting around $1,000 in customer acquisition over the course of just three years. And food circles ourselves, we're actually gonna be charging around $8 on average for a group of four to eight that comes out to eat and makes a reservation at your restaurant. Okay, so why are we here today? Um, as you know, I'm kind of an 18 new tech regular. Um, we are looking for, we did, well, what we have done, we got second at Startup Weekend, we placed in a thousand pitches. Um, we're housed in Tech Arc, and we're currently applying for, in the second round of moments in Michigan. Um, we're here for looking for a tech team, looking for development in new markets, and for potential investment in our project. Get in contact with us. Time's up. <laughs> Questions for food circles? I got one. Uh, is it only mobile? Is it mobile? Is it web? Is it a widget on Facebook? Sure. So How do you go to market? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're developing a web interface that restaurants will use, and then we're using a web mobile pair for users to connect to the restaurants. Uh, so they can use either. We're developing a mobile application as well as the web app for users. Got it. Two, one, or two. Um, I'm curious about your beta test. Do you know how many of the, the users, as it were, who did it, uh, ate out at a time they wouldn't have normally eaten out and or went to a restaurant they wouldn't have normally gone to? Sure. Uh, actually, we, uh, let the, we let the users kind of pick where they wanted to go. Um, in terms of how we targeted the restaurants, we just went up to the restaurants and said, hey, can we bring you traffic? Sure, what's the catch? We negotiated the deals, and uh, we just offered it to users. I think of the 74 participants, about half of that actually took advantage of the program and went up to them. They got some value, free appetizers or discounted food, that sort of thing. Okay, but, but you didn't measure from their point of view if this was an unusual move from their, for their part or if they were just getting extra bonus or something Right, exactly. We're actually looking to let, like at least, like I said, let users um, kind of get better value for their existing behavior. Well, I mean, we're going to be letting the restaurants manage their discount schedules, and based upon that, we're we're going to be you know letting the users decide where they want to go. Restaurants are staff now here, here, and then there. Yeah. What was the consistent feedback from the restaurant owners? Uh, you know, they were happy to have the traffic. Uh, they were happy to provide the incentives, and, and um, about 80 to 85 percent of the restaurants we contacted got, in, you know, created an incentive for us to use to bring them traffic just to try it out. 
So pretty positive feedback. We uh, have to formalize our process. That's one of the challenges we face is kind of contracting these relationships and making sure that they know what's coming, the customer knows what's going to happen. So we have to work on kind of formalizing those relationships. But overall, positive feedback so far. And in the face of competition like Groupon, where they're asking for like 50% plus commission, right. I think restaurants are pretty happy to, to give us a much smaller discount. How, how are the restaurants notified? How do they communicate? Is it just web-based? Sure. Or, um, so anytime I have my six friends and I say I want noodles and I, and I blast it out to Ann Arbor, I pick a restaurant that has offered me an incentive. I have an option to either display a coupon code or have Food Circle's administration make a reservation for me. So the reservation can happen in an automated or manual way. Uh, but either way, we get information of a Food Circle of Six going to this restaurant, and the, in and the restaurant gets either a phone call or an email that they can check to verify this Food Circle, when they're coming, what the deal is, that sort of thing. One, two, three. Um, I was going to say, uh, it's a good pitch. Um, I uh, have a question about your market positioning and strategy with regard to competition. Um, like there's items like Hill City out there uh, doing things as well. Um, who do you see as your competition and what is your advantage? Sure. Um, you know, our competition, to start with, we're focusing on this on-demand deal generation. We're moving into some social aspects later down the road, but our immediate competition, like I mentioned, Groupon, Restaurant.com. Each of, those, um, each of those services has their flaws that we feel we overcome. So Groupon, you have to wait for the spa deals to go by, the shoe deals to go by that you're just not interested in. You have to modify your current behavior to fit whatever seems to be happening on that day. Uh, Restaurant.com, uh, you know, high discounts, but the problem is there's high stipulations. The amount of money you have to pay is usually three or four times the amount you actually save. And it's not good for alcohol. So, you know, that's a big disadvantage right there. So it's a lot more flexible. Uh, you all have matching t-shirts. I can't read it from here. I'm just going to stand where I'm from. It's people yeah. you want to meet, things you want to eat. Discounts are can't be, be things that are buying cheap. Um, <laughs> Come shake my hand. How many restaurants do you need to get before this scales as a business? Is it a thousand? Kind of scales thousands? and... In it, it really, it really depends on. Yeah, yeah, it depends more on the users than the restaurants. The restaurants are happy to talk to us and have those deals because they want the traffic. So it's it's really easy to get the restaurants on board. It's the users that are you know more of the issue in building the user base. Can I get a round of applause for food? My name is David Bloom. I'm an entrepreneurial coach with Pack Seven Constellation, and I want to thank our A2 New Tech sponsors, A2 Geeks, the Zelluri Institute, and the Center for Venture Capital and Private Equity Finance. I never get the whole name out there. Got it this time. Uh, the U of M Office of Tech Transfer, and Safford and Baker a very cool law firm that is now uh, doing co-op work at uh, the Tech Brewery. So if uh, on a Friday afternoon you're interested in a beer and a good time with a lawyer, uh, Saffron and Baker is the one to go to. All right, so uh, next up, Barry McDonald's, and he got set up so quick, I have to like stall and give you his intro. Uh, Event Intel is, is very set up. Barry uh, got some assistance from the Spark East Business Accelerator and he survived it well enough to be able to talk to us tonight. Let's give it up for A2 New Tech's Event in Town. All right, thank you. My name is Barry McDowell. I'm the founder of Event Intel. And Event Intel really started off as a uh, online registration and tracking system. Uh, and what do I mean by that is that it has both components to enable you to set up a meeting, but it also has tracking components, and we do that with uh, uh, devices that I'll talk about. So what does Event Intel? It provides tools to do uh, basically a dynamic presentation uh, with the audience. And what I mean by that is that in a convention setting, and this was originally designed for that, uh, as you move around a convention floor and you interact with the different exhibitors, Event Intel allows you to exchange information with those, those, uh, those folks. It uses location-based input devices, and what I mean by that are things like RFID, QR codes, uh, and also potentially geotags to allow the uh, 
the, 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 the audience members to represent themselves to the uh, presenters. Uh, it does capture actionable data, so as the user moves and interacts with the presenter, uh, you're capturing that lead information, so I know who came to my booth, I, I can exchange information with them dynamically, and uh, it provides really some options that, uh, you know, some low-cost options for the, 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 the service will provide a low-cost option to expand beyond just event registration. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so in terms of the architecture, there's a couple of components in the system. We have basically uh, web-based tools to be able to create multi-layer events. So you can create the event, but you can also create the activities within the events. And what you can do is collaborate between the event hosts and the exhibitors or presenters to create their portion of the events come together and build a more uh, functional event. It has credit card processing that allows you to charge for you know, the event registration fees or program fees, or to collect the uh, revenue that the site will get from the folks using the system. Uh, we talked about the input devices, it uses RFIDs, QR tags, geo tags to again, so that as you move about the, the convention floor meeting area, you can uh, basically record that you were at that particular uh, uh, exhibit. And it basically enables the exhibitors, exhibitor to quickly exchange information with the, uh, the audience members. So as I scan in, I collect the lead information who that person is, uh, and I, I, as the exhibitor, also get to broadcast my information to that user. So how does this work? In terms of the, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of the actors in the system, we have the, uh, the host, who again designs the event, invite the uh, presenters and audience. Uh, we have the presenters that create the presentation, defines the interaction with the attendees, and then you have uh, the audience that participates. So if we use a familiar example like A2 Tech, uh, they would create the event, they would invite uh, different technologists like myself. Maybe there's somebody doing some green technology. Maybe there's a user doing mobile apps. Maybe there's a user doing some home, home automation. Each of those are going to create a profile of their exhibit within the system that will then define how they will interact with uh, a user that may come up to them and, and want to find out more information about their products and services. As you bring in the audience, and I'm sorry, it looks like we have a late arrival. So welcome, Bob. Uh, as the audience come in, what you would do is tag them. Just like you have a name tag, what we would do is we would affix a QR code or a QR, uh, uh, RFID tag within the name badge so that as that uh, person starts interacting with the, the first exhibitor, again, because he's touting green, rather than handing out a bunch of paper, he basically can send the email off with all their marketing material. Again, he's collecting information on who all the people are that stopped in my booth. As he moves to the next uh, person, again, they're doing a mobile app, so maybe they want to text him a message that says, you know, here's information, here's a link to our, our site. You can download a, a, a trial version of our, our software. Uh, because this person's moving through the convention area, this person can also pick up, uh, the, the exhibitor will be able to see all the other exhibitors that this individual has gone to. Uh, we're coming to an end. So it, with it, you basically are allowed to create multiple events. At, from, from looking at all the uh, templates that you've created, now you can create a new uh, event call, say Trends and Mobile Apps, and then you can pull down a profile from the other events into a new event, and of course, invite your audience in. Uh, I'm gonna run out of time, so I'm gonna just, just wrap it up. <laughs> Uh, in terms of, uh, I'll just jump to the ask because I know that's going to be a question. We, we are looking for uh, technologists to improve the business platform. Uh, we need to develop some uh, web apps, so iPhone, Droids, Android uh, web developers. Uh, we are looking for some business and market analysts to help us develop the strategies to mine and take advantage of the data that we'll collect. Business leaders to uh, develop some growth uh, and sales plan to grow the business. Of course, some investors to help us fund the development and business and the stabilization of the infrastructure. And customers. Uh, yeah, we need those too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. What was the name of the uh, event intel competitor that presented in UTEC last fall, Roger? That was
was too long ago. Yeah, that was too long ago. Yeah, she's already failed. You, you all did. <laughs> you totally did. All right. Who's your competition? Uh, I mean, there, there are quite a few sites out there. I mean, one of the top, uh, popular ones is Eventbrite. But what we do that's different than someone like an Eventbrite is that beyond just setting up the event is the tracking component that I talked about. So once you get acted into the event, it's the ability to be able to track the users throughout the, the convention space uh, and, and, and come back with actionable data that you can then take to plan future events or you know, analyze who all came by your particular exhibit, go after those set of customers. And Barry, are you selling that kind of walk about data? You know where these people are going with the show. Well, that's, that's the intent. Well, the, the ask where we say we need to figure out, get some smarter people in to figure out, okay, we're going to collect all this data. How do we then analyze it, both to resell it to the uh, exhibitors mm -hmm. uh, or figure out how else we can use it to leverage and improve our, our products and services? Uh, I was wondering, um, what would be your minimum viable product? Um, like, which one or two features would be the most useful to an event? organizer that uh, is either not out there already or would just like prove that this is like superior to anything else out there? Yeah, I, I think the, the, you know, there are a lot of sites out there that do the event plan the front end piece. So, I mean, not viable as just a front end piece. We really need to pick up the back end, which is again, the, the, the track end, which is, which gives us a unique feature over most of the other uh, online services. Thank you. I can see the appeal of the information to the exhibitors or the sponsors. Have you uh, caught any feedback from people uh, with regard to attendees and mm -hmm. their feelings about being uh, tracked or surveilled while they're at yeah. an event? Yeah, and, and of course there's that generational thing, right? I mean, the older folks are more worried about Big Brother, the younger people give everything up. <laughs> on Facebook, sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you, you, <laughs> you do you do run into you do run into different levels of anxiety about how much data. I mean, we we built in uh, some privacy feature to allow you to kind of select down what you're willing to share with the exhibitor uh, as, as one way to control it. And of course, ultimately, because it's a passive system, you have to actively scan in. So if I choose not to interact with an exhibitor, I can not scan in there. Um, you, you compare yourself to Eventbrite, so I'm assuming you're a website that offers more solutions than that of you know, Eventbrite. Yeah. So um, your solutions require hardware of some sort to mm -hmm. actually you know, successfully track the data. Right. How does the user actually get this hardware? Are you selling it? Do you have any idea? Yeah. What is your advantage here? Here's the, it, essentially with, with Event Result, especially using QR codes, uh, basically is a smartphone, the QR reader uh, or a webcam uh, allows you to basically scan in users. Uh, we've, we've also built in some features that allow the users to participate in it. But when we, tried, when we designed the system, we really were thinking about the event host, the event planner, and the audience themselves, making sure that the system had something for each. So there is a benefit for uh, the, the audience in, in that they can, as they uh, participate in the, uh, the event, they can actually uh, go in and select which exhibitors they want to, say, scope out before they go to the event. If there's an agenda with a schedule, they can actually uh, create a sub-schedule off of that so they, they can uh, plan their time. And then, like I said, they can also go back online, and after they scan in, they can go back and review all the people we've gone to, and they'll all have all, all their uh, material electronically, electronically rather than lugging around a suitcase full of marketing. Okay. If, if I can follow up, um, so right now, the presence, if, I'm, if I'm at CES, I get a card, I get a CES schedule, I'm able to schedule everything ahead of time, choose what stuff I like, they send me emails, and the emails are great, I still get them, but when they want to go in there, I talk to vendors, I'm actively giving them a card saying, I want more information about your instructor system. So that, that is a system already where I'm, I'm exchanging with each exhibitor, yeah. and I'm tracking my schedule online. Yeah, I, I, again, it's just the speed of the exchange. I mean, rather than the, the business card, I mean, it just basically gives the, the scans faster. Right, scans faster, one card, you, you go to multiple vendors, uh, exchange information quickly. 
He did a follow up. So, yeah, sort, of like, sort of like bumps for the user so they would be able to like yeah. exchange data with either other users or the vendors. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. One of the features that we actually have built in is that the users can also scan each other so they can see people in common places in common. So, I know the people that we've met jointly at the convention or event. Uh, and I can see also the other folks that, you know, you, I see all the vendors you've gone to. I see all the people that we've met in common. So it's a conversation piece. No follow-up, Hannah. we got to go. Okay, sorry. Catch him in the hallway. <laughs> Thank you. Kerry McDonald, <laughs> thank you, Seth. <laughs> and then all of us from Hannah, they're all going to go out to eat afterwards and do food stores. All right. Well, Trevor sets up. Who remembers after the deadline? This was a... Uh, yeah, of course you do, Wes, Ed. Uh, this was uh, one of our A2 New Tech success stories. They had a very nice exit about a year and a few months ago where um, Raphael joined WordPress for a while. I think he's out of there by now. Uh, what we have here with Trevor Fitzgerald is another WordPress plugin that's looking to uh, beat the trodden path of, uh, of Raphael and after the deadline. Uh, Trevor's from Royal Oak. Uh, he's got a log search engine that looks kind of like uh, Apple configurator. No, you didn't fall. It shows you some um, recent posts they come from around the blogosphere that have been tagged uh, with entrepreneurship. Uh, you can also see like recent activity, so you can see over time how popular this topic is that people are writing about. Um, it also automatically suggests some related topics, so you can discover some new categories that you might be interested in, might be relevant to you. Um, so that's the website. Um, but I think where it gets really cool is that I created a WordPress plugin for it too. Um, so here I created like a food blog, so I usually talk about maybe recipes or cooking or something like that. Uh, if we go to the dashboard, if we were to create a new blog post, uh, it adds a little widget here. Uh, and this, this is a news feed that it automatically figures out what I usually write about. And in this case, it's cooking and recipes and baking and things like that. So it sends a request to press tags, finds out what other people have talked about that same stuff are writing about and displays them here. So I can see what um, some what's you know, trending in the in my industry. Uh, so it might maybe, maybe give me some ideas of things I can write about. Like if I have an iPhone blog, maybe there's a big news release, things like that. Um, you can also easily reblog an article too. So it just gives a little excerpt and uh, you can link back to the original article. So it really encourages sharing between bloggers and can help build a better community there. Uh, I want to go over uh, real quick too. Um, some of the things I've learned maybe so far along the way. Um, so I started out by feeding it a list of my bookmarks. These are sites that I frequent, or maybe sites that I knew had good quality um, original content. Uh, and of those, about 225 of them turned out to be WordPress sites. So those automat automatically got added to the index. Um, from there, I would find out what sites those 225 linked to, and of those, another thousand or so were WordPress sites, so it's just growing a little bit from there. So from those thousand, we found what those linked to. Um, we found 2,300, um, repeat again. 
an hour at 4,500 today. So I intentionally slowed it down here a little bit toward the, toward the end. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but now there are almost 25,000 blog posts um, indexed and organized by category there. Um, some of the challenges so far, there's a lot of data, and that's kind of why I slowed it down, because um, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to manage that. Um, I've already made some improvements lately, so uh, I'm going to ramp the crawling back up here soon. Um, right now, I have to fetch all the blog posts, so I'm like checking repeatedly to see if a blog has some new posts and then uh, adding them to the index. But I'd like to, um, well, with the plugin, what they do is they push their blog posts to me instead of me pulling it from them. So I don't have to crawl as much, which is nice. Um, Non-English sites, so in, when it was crawling, it found like French, Spanish, Italian sites. Um, and I didn't really want those in there now. I'm saving them for later, but I don't want to display them on the site, especially when I'm just starting. Uh, so I found an API that you can feed the blog post in and figures out what language it is and saves it there. So just English for now. Uh, quality of results is really important. So just like Google, Yahoo, and Bing, um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to present the, the content to the reader. Right now, I'm just sorting by reverse chronological order. Um, so I'd like to maybe rank them by how uh, uh, how many people reblog or things like that. So how popular the post is. Um, so thanks. If you have a WordPress blog, you can use this invite code and get priority access and check it out. Awesome. So Jonathan, and then who's the second over here? Yeah. One, two. Hey, Jeff, great presentation. I like that. Um, who else is out there currently doing this right now? Uh, there are some things like uh, Google Blog Search, maybe Technorati, um, but they don't have the plugin component to it. So I think that's what separates me right. Okay. What's your monetization strategy? Uh, could be a few options. The easiest would be to put ads up. Um, it's possible, it might not, and we'll see. Um, also, uh, perhaps a blog can promote their post within a specific category. So if you have a cooking blog, maybe the Food Network wants to promote their story so that it gets to the top of the list and more people will reblog it, more people will see it there. Are you locked into WordPress? Uh, I like WordPress because I've been developing it with it for years, so I know it well like that. Um, WordPress is great because tagging is such a core functionality for it, so bloggers don't have to do anything different to take advantage of this. So it's nice there. Um, as a blogger, I'd, I'd love this. Are you, uh, under a possible premium service model, are there other features that you consider that you would then charge for later? Let me know what you like. <laughs> so that looked like the plugin was for the dashboard. Do you have a plugin for the actual for the front end? Yeah, uh, the front end. So no, I considered it though, because maybe like maybe you can show related posts from the other from other WordPress blogs, like at the bottom of yours. So that's something I've considered too. Maybe making that like an option you could have. You have some kind of a data mine that you've indexed in your plugin that's always talking to that. Uh, we looked at secondary tertiary uses of that data mine in terms of analytics application. Uh, no, that's a good idea though. Uh, I, I did notice that like um, like Egypt saw a big spike you know, the last week or so. So you can kind of see what people are talking about, things like that. So that might be a good use for that. All right, and I'm trying to form a WordPress community on Tumblr where everybody's talking about everybody else. I think that would be great, yeah. Over here. to offer like so if you have your blog listed in there to offer like an analytics tool so you can see how popular or like how many people are reblogging things like that that would be good your food blog was a wordpress.com blog is no that's, that was a wordpress.org oh it's a full blown wordpress that's right yeah self-hosted yeah it only works for like for those who don't know there's wordpress.org which is self-hosted 
WordPress.com, which they hosted for you. This only works with WordPress.org. Oh, so you have to install WordPress in there. That's right, yep, if you have it on your own server. Um, have you talked to WordPress.com about putting your uh, plugin in? I launched at midnight last night and it was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> of interest to the entrepreneurial community. I'm going to be very specific about this ask because Hannah, of course, she wants it to be a very specific ask. This is not, I want to sell something to the entrepreneurial community. <laughs> right, this is an, uh, an event like an A2 New Tech that would attract the entrepreneurial community to learn and to grow and to interact with each other and with investors. So, uh, and we'll have that in a minute, Bob. But uh, I wanted to give the disclaimer and then I wanted to give you Kyle Hall and co-founder. co-founders to start a company. Um, so I'm going to start with the story of Sachin. Uh, Sachin's my friend. He, he has a great idea. Uh, he's a business person. He has some skills. Um, but he needs a technical partner in order to uh, get funding and build a prototype. Um, but he wants to make the right match. Um, and we think the current methods are not effective for this. Um, so what we do, we match up co-founders. So an example of Sachin, he would um, do a search on the site. Uh, based on his location, the skills he's looking for, interests. Um, then he would review the profiles of people he found, um, based on uh, their experience, uh, recommendations from LinkedIn, um, and then he would contact them um, via our built-in messaging service and, uh, and then meet in person. Um, so how we're better than LinkedIn, or I guess should be different, um, we're focused on specifically for co-founders. Um, so we're going to have specialized features um, that are specific to finding a co-founder. Um, we're going to list skills you have and skills you need and match on both of those. Um, we're also going to do a personality match. Um, so as far as making money, um, if we want to go that route, 
Um, these would be some potential advertisers, um, basically startup service providers. Um, so we're going to switch to a demo. Okay. Yeah, so this is the site, cofound.org. You can try it today. Um, <laughs> so Sachin is looking for somebody with programming skills. Um, he finds some people on the site. Uh, he clicks on Adam. Um, Adam reads the profile, see if he's interested. Um, then he can contact them by the send message. So once he sends a message, it shows up in Adam's inbox. Um, within the first 24 hours of launching this, I already got two people looking for programmers, which is awesome. Um, and then you can actually post up a pitch so like this person has a better social media site. Um, if you click on this, you can contact them about that, ask them a question, um, or post your own pitch over here on the right. That's kind of the demo. And then just kind of a future version of the site of a mock-up. Um, so you have the percentage match. You, uh, this is you over here and which skills you match for, message, um, more information, experience, and then we're going to pull res or, um, recommendations from LinkedIn there. Um, how you can help us, uh, you can sign up, it's free. Uh, you can give us feedback on the site, tell your friends, uh, or you can join our team to help us out with uh, spreading the word and uh, developing new features for this. Um, so the team that worked on this from Startup Weekend, right here, at the bottom. Any of those people here? Yes, uh, Doug's here. Uh, who else is here? Is that Adam? Yep. That's Adam. Yep. And questions? Wow, that was quick. <laughs> So it's not a startup, but it's kind of like for every one of our startups. So who will be the first to ask that question right away? Are you looking to monetize? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if, okay, so look. I, Can you be more specific? This is, this is the bottom line. I want this to be successful in this community, at least, like Ann Arbor. So I want you guys to all sign up and like actually form companies here. Um, so don't you have us? We're all on LinkedIn. If, right? if that means, no. <laughs> if that means that we need to make money, then uh, we'll go there. All right, Jonathan, you were going to ask me about how we populated the day. I would ask you about Sachin, yeah. Oh, any, okay. any early success stories? Did he, you had, you had kind of had half the story. I wanted, I think okay, I so, Sachin so Sachin is just an example, but I can tell you, let's see. Who else do I have an example of? There's a bunch of people on the site. <coughs> Go to my message thing. Oh, so for example, um, this guy contacted me, Jacob, um, and we actually met and we talked. Um, he has an interesting startup. Boy, what a deal. Um, so Oi. he got some good feedback from me. What's that? Oi. Oi. Oi, what a deal. <laughs> um, so yeah, we actually met and we talked. Hey, what was that? Um, okay, you, you told me I was wrong. I, I love it when you do that. Okay, so you didn't pre-populate the site with the totality of LinkedIn. What, what's, what's up with that? Why would I do that? Well, you were showing me all these LinkedIn contacts. Don't sign up at Oh, thank you. That's my All right, don't assume that we all went. <laughs> yeah, so uh, have you thought about any features for sort of anonymity or privacy of people posting their information? On yeah. Your going to modify this so that the name is optional and I think we might take out the photo too. Oh. Or at least like, well, that's optional right now, but yeah, take out the name and make it anonymous. It's a good idea. What's this personality match? Are we doing match.com for co-founders? Uh, yes. That's exactly what it is. How's it work? Uh, we don't know yet. So we're thinking of doing... <laughs> <laughs> so we're thinking it's of doing... paper! <laughs> We're thinking of doing uh, Myers Briggs tests. Okay. Um, maybe some other people have suggestions on what we can like do that. for personality. Well, I have like, a question. I have bias for that. No, I have a question actually. Okay. My lab room, my oh, all right. But then, no. Has Startup Weekend called you yet? 
No, I wish they had because they sent out an email on Monday. A crack form that was so much less good. Sorry, take that one offline. <laughs> Good question. Um, I think it's going to be hard to match people on personality initially. Um, I mean, if you're really concerned about personality not working out, you can, you know, read the results on the profile. So initially, we're not going to have personality be like a filter. But you can always have a convenient person and you'll assign them a personality. Sorry, I didn't hear your question. You can always meet in person yeah. through the system and you'll assign a personality then. It's not necessarily yeah. required. Yeah, awesome. Rating system. Yeah, I worked with this guy before, but what a deal. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen on, on dating sites, but they don't have that. Um, don't use them a lot. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a reason why. Um, I mean, you, you can't really like say like to someone, I don't like you, and post it publicly on the site. Um, but yeah, you, you can, there's the recommendations. Um, so you can get recommendations from people, and you say, like, this is a good person to work with. Uh, they have these skills, and they're great at it. Um, and then you can also, we're going to have um, like mutual friends on Facebook. So like if you click on someone, you can see like who you know that they know and vice versa. So you can actually talk to them and, and figure out oh, and get a, get a reference, yeah. All right, so we're all, all going to sign up at the bottom. What about uh, like saturation from recruiters and problems like that? Do you consider any of that? I've already started to have that problem, actually, um, which is interesting. Um, somebody literally contacted me and said, hey, I'm a recruiter. I need a programmer. Uh, can I sign up for your site? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, yeah, it's going to be a problem. Saying, if, you're, if you're selling to entrepreneurs, don't make an announcement. Well, if you're looking for a co-founder, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we may have to go in there and like actively take down profiles of people that are not looking for a co-founder. Let them sign up, but then silently don't show them in results, don't deliver their messages, and then they'll just be like, oh, this site doesn't work, and move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do not get Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Google it later. All right, thank you very much. We've had five. floor to you to uh, announce uh, events and opportunities of interest to the entrepreneurial community, beginning with, who needs a co-founder? John Engel, Wes Austin, Love you. Those who don't know, know me, I'm with the University of Michigan. We have, we, we are looking for um, a coder, actually. Um, one of our, uh, our faculty members has created something that helps with um, cerebral palsy and stroke victims to regain mobility. Um, it's a, there's a hardware application, but there's some software. And we need to recode that software. So when you get developer, there's a little bit of hardware. A lot of it's going to be data mining and, um, and making it more tailorable. A program like that is hard coded in, and we need to be able to, to tailor that. So come see me afterwards. Perfect. Thank you, Wes. Exactly what I was looking for. More announcements of that elk in the back. So, uh, a few Speak quick announcements. Um, reminder to sign up for Startup Digest. Jeff, Jeff Epstein is down here as well. Um, it's a weekly uh, email newsletter uh, that highlights area startup events. Um, another note, uh, April 28th is an event called Funded by Night, where uh, startups can apply. 25 are selected to compete for a $100,000 convertible note from two, um, two local uh, investors, Detroit Venture Partners and, um, and Ludlow Ventures. So you can sign up for that on fundedbynight.com. Lastly, for those of you that might be attending South by Southwest in Austin, we'll be getting together just to meet one another. Uh, so there's some familiar faces there. Um, that'll be next Tuesday on the 22nd uh, at Centaur in Detroit. Uh, but you can find me after, and Jeff Epstein is here as well. If you want to raise awesome. your hand, um, you can answer any questions you have. All right. Uh, the Knights at the Marketing Roundtable meet the second Tuesday of the month. That's the Tuesday before the third Tuesday that is the AG Nutech Tuesday. And next month, Jim Hume 
a night of great distinction, is going to do a program called Think Big, Start Small. Uh, marketing techniques that small companies rarely use, but could get a big uh, boost from, and that you can actually afford. So uh, check that out. It's on the Spark calendar, or go to Nights of Marketing. Uh, Wes. I forgot one tidbit of information important. Um, I actually have some funding to pay for someone to do that. So. <laughs> okay, but you're just going to get buried now. Uh, Second Tuesday every month, same night as Nights of Marketing. Uh, Go Tech at the HMX shop. It's a geek show and tell, five minute presentation, the best geek show and tell on the planet. We usually get 50 to 70 people. Um, anybody likes to make anything. What time? 7 p.m. So you can actually go to Marketing Roundtable and then go to Go Tech. Right. And I know just the startup to plan my evening. <laughs> More announcements in the back. Dennis? So. No baby. All right. The first Sunday every month, we're going to start doing a complex systems reading group. And the second Sunday is going to be future engineering. So that's Sundays at 4 p.m. The first two meetings will be at Tea House, uh, which will create a mailing list and see if people want to come to these. It's a bit more abstract than startups, but it is good intellectual um, learning and whatnot. Sorry, got to read. Got to read. All right. That's it. Oh, okay, it. Steve, bring it. All right. Um, my office is over at the Tech Brewery, or uh, AKA the Northern Brewery, which is over uh, by Broadway in Plymouth. And every Friday at 4.30, we have an event called Beer 30, where we just kind of stop working and start drinking. And <laughs> the fourth Friday of every month, we have what we call, creatively, Fourth Friday Beer 30. Um, and everyone's invited to come out and join. Uh, usually we try to get some company to sponsor it, which means they provide the beer. Um, so Stafford and Baker has been known to buy the beer. Yes. And so, yeah, so Fourth Friday, which I think is, uh, it's a week from Friday? Is that right? I think it's a this week being from the third Friday. So Tuesday. next Friday, when we're Fourth lunch. Friday, so come to the brewery and drink beer at 4.30. Beer at 4.30. Back here. You guys got to stand up faster. We're just having long pauses between announcements. Look at it. I think there's going to be a run after this, too, so we'll let you know if it's dollar package. Oh, yeah. yeah all right. Once again, louder for us hard of hearing people. Taco Tuesday, tonight, after this. Sabor Latino. Sabor Latino is the after party. Taco Tuesday. We stand adjourned. See you at Sabor Latino. Thank you. See you next month. <laughs>